Okay, so this week, our kick-ass lady is Katie Heron. Um, she works for the Braves. And a lot of a lot of our Braves fans will know who she is because she has been featured in like a couple of different articles. And she was on something, um, like a video package for the Braves last year. I don't remember if I watched it like during a rain delay or if it was like a pregame show or what. I really don't remember. But I just remember seeing they had put a video package together for her. But um anyway. Katie was born in Georgia, and she played, like, t-ball and softball and all that good stuff growing up. She was a pitcher in college. She went to LaGrange. And, um... Well, Tyler. Yes. She went to LaGrange, and she had an internship with the radio station when she was in college. And... They had, like, set up a booth outside of games or something to that effect. And she just, like, really enjoyed it. Well, when she graduated, she had a teaching degree. So, she taught middle school for a couple of years. And, but in the interview, she just kind of talks about how her mind kept going back to that internship and how much fun it was and going to the ballpark and interacting with fans and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, she resigned from teaching and got an internship with the Braves. And she was, like, in charge of social media. She was, she did stuff with, like, the giveaways. So, like, bobbleheads and mini bats and all that stuff. And um, helping kids get, you know, meet and greets with Blooper. Or what was the fucking mascot before that? Homer? Was that his name? Did I just make that up? What was his name? The Big Baseball? I don't remember. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Because he's dead now. Um, she... <laughs> So, she, after the internship, like, she worked her ass off. So, the Braves um, offered her a full-time position. And she, a few months after she started working for the Braves full-time, she started suffering, like, really, really, really bad headaches. And she was struggling to, like, read words on the computer screen. And she talked about, like, her eyes being heavy and things like that. Anyway, she had trouble. She said, like, the defining moment was she was going to leave a meeting and she couldn't find the door handle to get right. out of the room. And that was kind of her, like, okay, there, there's something wrong. I need to go, like, see a doctor. So she went to ophthalmologist. And she has a rare condition that I'm probably going to fuck all the way up, but I'm going to try it. It's pseudotumor cerebri. Fuck, I don't know. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Pseudotumor, I've got that part. Anyways, um, it's where spinal fluid builds up around the brain, and it puts pressure on your optic nerves. And it's actually, like, it's rare, but in the people it happens, it's most common with women between the ages of, like, 20 and 40 or 20 and 50, I believe. It rarely leads to blindness. It's usually, like, headaches, vomiting, all this stuff. This is not a medical pod, but just FYI, in case you're dealing with any of this, you probably should get your shit checked out. Um, but Katie, her vision, she lost her peripheral vision first, and it worked its way into where now she sees, like, about the size of the top of a pencil. And outside this of that... This terrifies me, by the way, because, like, I have, like, 2,800 vision or something ridiculous. And it gets just a little bit worse every time I go. Yeah. And, like, the eye doctor is like, well, you shouldn't really end up, like, blind, blind, because, like, it's just a little bit at a time. But right. I'm like, I'm 32 and it's getting worse. Like, I plan to live a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that's one of the things, like, I know you adapt and overcome, and obviously she has, but, like, it's terrifying. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, she, because one of the, like, reasons that I'm sure that she kind of put things off a bit, not tremendously, but a bit, was she had perfect vision. She could see great. She always had been able to until this stuff started. But, um... She went under, she had a couple of surgeries, like, to relieve pressure off those nerves. She had a shunt place to drain some of that spinal fluid, all that stuff. Um, she would try different medicines. She'd get a little relief here and there. Um, but 
eventually they kind of came to the terms with the fact like for her this is going to cause blindness and this is just what she has to deal with so at that point she took some time off from the braves they kind of told her you know go take all the time you need get used to this new life that you have basically and when you're ready to come back we'll welcome you with open arms and um she walked away in 2017 right before the park was supposed to open like right Mm -hmm. before that would have been Sancho's first season if yeah first season um and she moved back in with her parents and got a service dog and kind of started learning how to live life the new way and um she took classes she learned how to cook clean navigate with a cane like literally at 28 years old she learned how to live a whole new life um and after those months of learning how to live again she came back to work with the Braves and Mm. she still works there today she now lives in her own apartment she has a guide dog named Jack um she lives like just a really short walk to work so like because she can't drive anymore obviously um so she's moved into an apartment where she's really close to the stadium she's able to do what she loves and she's a kick-ass lady because i can't imagine living with a handicap like that my entire life but i really even more so can't imagine something like that coming out of nowhere and the way she was able to not just kind of shut down because I could see how that would be really easy to do, right? but to continue to push on and learn how to live life the new way and keep doing the job that she loves it makes her a kick-ass lady for sure. Right. Which is kind of like the impossible question because like, obviously you would never want to be blind for your whole life, but also right. if you go blind at 28, like, you know what you're missing. missing. Yeah. Either way, it sucks. But, yes. like, we also have our friend John, who, like, runs yes, for 92 hours in a row. And yeah, he's I mean, blind. He's, he's like, there's running for four days straight now, probably. <laughs> so there's a lot of people out there who are very courageous and adapt yeah. and, like, overcome and, like, are kicking ass at life. Yep. Literally making lemonade out of lemons. So that's awesome. Amen. <laughs> 